Hi everyone, Day here, and welcome back to my The Great Ace Attorney Play. On today's episode, we're hopping back into the trial of Soseki Natsume, who is now declared guilty by the jurist. So we're going to wind up trying to sway the jurist back to at least a neutral positioning. And hopefully we can do that in today's episode. So we're just going to try to continue. I will load the game here. We're just going to try to get started. I don't know really how much else they have to say to each other before we actually get into it. <clears throat> Sorry. Just want to um see if I can do the voice good. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Query. Who? Wait. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Query. Not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. You're just upset that last time it worked out in our favor. This is not something that works out for your favor, so obviously you do not wish for us to partake in such things. It's not antiquated when it actually helps prevent, you know, the prosecution from bulldozing us over and basically running amok in the courtroom and allowing innocents, you know, the innocent to wind up being, I don't know, executed or whatever happens in this court. I think people would die. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I would definitely want to push this. Call it antiquated if you will, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Oh, Foreman. I thought his name was Fairplay. Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that nep um, Nipponese whippersnapper and his unkissed refusal to throw in his alley. Yeah, I, I know you're from the last trial, even though I don't know your first name, sir. Very well then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Dun, dun, dun. Judicial findings. The jurors' contentions. For pity's sake, that little Nipponese oddity already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why, it can only have been the victim. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. I don't want her. You can't say that definitively. That's my only point. That a poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Looks like he's a boxer. Mm, your books, yes. I shop that. A bourbon books? <sighs> No, not worth a visit. I honestly don't know which route I need to take or focus on. Hmm. With only minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. No, you do not. You're li like some of your basis for sending him the gavel is literally unconclusive. You cannot just do that. Oh dear. Even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsumi's guilt now. Ugh. Why did he have to run away like that? Well, I mean, he's as skittish as a deer. So I could totally see why he would run away like that. Just knowing the guy's personality, you it's obvious. And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? That, that is my key point right there. That we don't even know... If there was anyone else around enough, because even Soseki himself doesn't seem to be able to say or acknowledge that there was someone else there. He admits that 
there was no one else there in front of them. So it's kind of difficult to figure things out from that perspective. This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Narihoto, this is no time for grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue. Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Okay, I did forget that part too. I thought it had to be unanimous. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. You have the floor, Consul. Begin your summation examination. Yes, my lord. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryanosuke. You can do it. I love this part too. Like, this game is so full of content, it's insane. Especially considering it's a freaking 3DS game. The defense is rebuttal. Okay, so for pity's sake, he's admitted it himself already. I I'm going to press some people because I don't think anything just... I want to make sure I'm pressing the right button because I see the word pit. I don't want to press that. Um, excuse me, but aren't you... Yes, that's right. I was in a witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the sight of it, anyway. And that I don't understand, but I'll go with it. So he was on the witness stand. Interesting. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the girl rushed down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Oh, his name is Fairplay. I don't know why I thought otherwise. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me in the other day. You had me in that young hatter. Pegged as cr criminals. Yes, the hatter. The guy that, that posed as if he was on a horse and yike. <laughs> he was hilarious. Oh, well, you know, water under the bridge. <laughs> now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around. The police have been badgering me nonstop. If, if I could turn back the clock, I would do exactly the same thing. Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. Oh, the Hatter? There's some doubt about him? I'm free to make up my own mind about who's good here, who isn't. Ugh. Thank goodness. All right, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. <laughs> it didn't sound good, at least not from Mr. Fairplay's perspective. If he saw that a woman in green collapse before his eyes, why, well, he can only have been the victim. You're right at that at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Oh, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly, that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly, that funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. Let's just jump into conclusions. But let's not forget, madame. The defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. He admits to stabbing her. His life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward. Honestly. I mean, the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that's a lie, as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have concocted something more, I don't know, credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? Sheesh. I, I, I don't have, I can't, I can't comment on all of it. I'm just, I could tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do declare, the man has already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was no one else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could have possibly have committed this awful crime. Ugh! If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it could be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well for her. 
Mm, maybe it wasn't worth pressing. Maybe. A man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Natsume could have taken back from your books. Oh, yes. Like you drew on the map, you mean. Well, was it Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. But I'm just saying you can't ride your whole theory on literally a, a thought. Like, you don't know for sure that he, did, he didn't do that. And at the moment, there is no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? <sighs> well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you want to get home as quickly as possible. That's a, that's a fair assessment. I can't say it's not a fair assessment. It's just that you can't say for sure. Well, yes. Uh, why is all oh, this true? Oh, really? The only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given it a lot of thought, you know? I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the Calabash Road way, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Hmm, a reason why Soseki-san might have taken the longer way home. Yes, a good reason. Don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. Joan. But a poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful! I'm glad I'm not the only one that is like, why are you here? You know, like, I just feel like at the end of the day, you're still kind of suspect like yourself. Whatever is the matter, young man? You're gonna pretend you don't even know me? You're the wife of Mr. Garadab, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume his room? Or, <laughs> didn't you? Well, I guess he didn't promise to keep that a secret, but he wasn't supposed to vocalize that. The master's wife? Where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid, the maid, you understand? He's keeping up that charade. Ah, oh, this is going to be awkward. Ah, uh, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. Hmm. I still don't trust her. To what degree? Don't know, but just the fact that she's here. I Well, I guess she was chosen before we actually spoke to her. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear. I preferred I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodgings in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. But there, he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely, you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes! It's just a sort! What? But in all his time in that dark and dingy room, which you... Spotting that unscrupulous mustache! The man never speaks! And don't get me started on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be... He must be putting a bomb in there or something. Oh dear, poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm. Nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... <laughs> what is that even supposed to mean? Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She said enough demi things already. Hmm. So I don't I don't trust her. I really don't care. Can't we wrap this up now? 
I've got work to be doing. So far, I, I honestly don't know which ones to pick. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Thank <laughs> you, you know, Skate. I appreciate that. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line, too. So is my family's. Ah. Like, so you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. And then you do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I'll go to the union every morning to find out what Nate's doing. If you're late and the work's taking this tooth. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after a cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog from dawn till dusk it is. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. By that old big shop it was. What? Another coincidence? He was digging up the road. That's that will be reason to to take a different route. That's right, Mearsham Street. It was Mearsham Street. On the map, Mister Narahodo, there are only three named streets. Juror number five. I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can't we just get this person's over with now? Please, sir. It's important. Oh, and I'll do it then. Thank you. All I ask. So, digging up the street. Let's try this guy. He seems like he know. He, it seems like he might say something interesting. I'm sorry, fold it. You say, fold what? Um, no, no. What I said was, hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a- Well, I don't like that voice for him. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you were all talking about. And at what time did you visit your books on a day in question? Well, I was picking up books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day. Including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say. Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. Not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Yeah, I felt like this old man my nose. Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and dumped my head. It always was after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Fucked myself clean that I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? And he's wearing a green jacket. Like he, he, with him saying that, he has a very similar shape. To the victim. A very similar shape to the victim. And they're, they're both wearing hats too. Same, they both wear the same color hat as well. That's going, that completely means something. That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you say? Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Juror number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Sorry, extremely sick? No, no, I'm quite all right now. <laughs> it sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can't help feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree. It's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. Exactly. They're, they're literally willing 
to sacrifice someone's life here. Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. That's something. We must use that to our advantage, Mr. Narahodo. Cunningly. Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again carefully. And if any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercil mercilessly against each other. Yes, don't hold back. Pit them all against each other. Hmm. And I wouldn't have gone around the house. I want to say I wouldn't have Objection. if this works. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At all, at all it's Consul. Explain yourself. Please, don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Wasn't sure if this was the right road. I was kind of nervous. Hey, what? I, I just want to get this done and dusted. <laughs> that was a little bit of Shigamichi coming through right there for sure. Well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir. What, what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On a day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Mearsham Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home could not have taken him along Mearsham Street and down Briar Road. Oh yes, of course. What, what do you think, sir? Well, yes, can't argue with that really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. Defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I, I suppose that must be right, eh? Juror, juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, we see now that he had no choice. Yes. My lord, my judge, sir, if I may. Yes. I, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes. I like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. Okay, juror, juror number three is probably my favorite of all, in all of this. <laughs> he seems level-headed. Like, even his thought process, I can't fault him because he did think about things thoroughly. So that's, a, that's very much appreciated. I like the way he thinks. Sure, a little bit of his conclusions kind of was still like assumptions. But I mean, when you consider the time period and how you don't really have much forensic science and, and stuff to like base your, your findings on, he came to a very solid conclusion. What about you, sir? Uh, who, me? Hmm, well, all right then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, be filled in. That's what I say. <laughs> I, I also like how he convinced him too. He's like, look, even you should know that he was unable to go that route. So we don't have enough information at the current present to continue forward with that thought process. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruto. That was wonderful. Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes. And it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. Maybe. I don't think... I guarantee a whole box of salt that jo Joan is not changing her opinion. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really right or not. Now, if only... If we could just identify one more clue 
or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume. I feel like the next person would be the old man. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. Von Zeke's is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent, or whatever means we have at our disposal. Thank you, Consul. On with the summation examination, please. Yes, my lord. I have to say not guilty at this point, so I can see where this trial goes from here. Jury number three is my favorite. Sorry, sir. Did not mean to do that. The poor woman was attacked from behind. I feel like maybe I gotta press this against Joan's statement. Oh no, 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 it's her. Objection. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the jury's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, Consul? Well, juror number two? Juror number six? Why, whatever do you mean, sir? It was a cold day in February. <laughs> I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. Isn't that the point? There is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the, the, the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. Man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. What he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are well aware of all this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection. Objection. We now have more information. Can we really be sure of that, madame? Can we really? Why, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard your number six's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! Jury number one. My goodness, you, you mean. <laughs> Jury number three. What is your name, sir? What is your name? <laughs> I like him a lot. That's right. I'm referring, of course, to hard of hearing juror number six. Are, are you really suggesting? The person in the green overcoat and the defenders all collapse in front of his eyes. Mr. Jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today. That is entirely possible. Yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. My goodness me. Hmm, sorry, you need to pee. <laughs> And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was, in fact, indeed, juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly, the crime scene on Briar Road, where the woman was stabbed, was not on his way home. Oh my! This is looking this is looking worse for the um gear adapts. <laughs> because so far, the crime scene takes place in front of their abode, in front of their home, in front of their house. But we do have but like we still have the um the jester guy who um appears to also be soseki's neighbor and the other guy he was arguing with. so there are two other people but this is looking good for soseki you idiot old man 
If you hadn't been so daft as to play roaming around there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago. <laughs> and if that was the case, Soseki would never have had a reason to run. And really, what were you thinking? Where is such a befuddling coat? Are you li This is victim blaming. Like, <laughs> the guy fell. It doesn't matter the fact that he was wearing a green coat. I actually, I approve. But green is like one of my favorite colors. It's not my favorite favorite color, but it's up there. I love green. I would totally wear a green coat. What do you mean befuddling coat? <laughs> I'm just gonna let him fight his own battles. He he totally has this covered. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days? Hmm? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? I'm sorry. I didn't. I did not expect the aggression. It, it caught me off guard. Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles or wear a beautiful green overcoat? Is it? I love. I love. <laughs> <laughs> he is defending his his garments. I appreciate that. <laughs> My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but <laughs> You like to change your leaning, I presume. <laughs> of not guilty thank you and i would too <laughs> what is it a crime to change your mind is it well he, he is geared to go he wants he wants to tussle round and round with someone else <laughs> they cheesed him off <laughs> oh dear wait a second oh no Okay, I was looking like I try to make sure that um, everything is recording as it should be. I got a little nervous because it didn't seem like um, I guess there was just no sound. I I can't hear any sound really. Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes two, the nose four. So the nose have it not guilty, they say, which means we no longer have a consensus. Among the members of the jury. So the only ones that did not change their opinion, which I like to keep in mind, were Joan and Fairplay. Two people. Well, Fairplay is just from the last, you know, from the last uh, trial. So obviously there's some animosity there towards us from his end. But Joan, Joan is someone I can't rule out as a suspect. The trial will continue, especially now, under, um, under the, what do I want to say? Basically, with the new information we have gained, thanks to our, um, summation examination. Objection. <laughs> please don't, please don't toss it. Don't, no, no. <laughs> Started. Could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hello chalice moments after raising an objection? Isn't that curlish? That completely wrong. I need to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. L Lord von Zeeks? It seems I must retract my other my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. <laughs> oh boy. Is he is he literally getting ready to say that they're not insightful because of the fact that they changed their verdicts? <laughs> Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed. 
Star Wars Jiren number 5 was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claimed. I believe you said it was a good two yards of pavement, of the pavement which you had excavated, sir. That's right. Took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nepanese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Ah, um, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh? Hey, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? But did you see anyone? Oh boy. And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Eh? Hey, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have a hope of passing anyway. We just turn any gentlefolk back where they came. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. Leading! Leading! <laughs> Come on! I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his... <laughs> Are you serious? In his meanderings around town. Ah, is that true? Is it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like Joan. <sighs> Look, I mean, she hasn't committed any crimes. She was, she was, in a fit of rage of jealousy, sure. But what would that fit of rage have made her kill a person whom she thought was um? I don't know. Like, we don't really... Well, we know her name, right? I guess that's... I guess that kind of rules out possibility, maybe. <sighs> the incontro incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were fired at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back, to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Ah! Crushed! In a single sentence. Aunt, oh man. C cold man! You could talk? You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? We're asking him? Oh, I, I, um, can't say as I remember. You, you don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man that they accused saw, but I would lay a thousand to one. Against you being able to prove it. Ah, Von Ziegs is good. I would expect no less, though. Order, order! Lord Von Ziegs, explain yourself! My lord. If you had such a... Tr <laughs> if you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve... Why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Hmm. I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience. He, <laughs> he no doubt came full. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Ah! But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Uh oh, is, is his leg about to hit the table? So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> my lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Is it going to be those people? Granted, bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. Its next witnesses is going to be those guys. So Naruhoto, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. Oh. 
Never mind, maybe it's not them. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. All right. No matter who Von Zeeks brings to the stand as his witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Sosaki-san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing until the very end. Until this battle is over. He definitely has a phoenix in him. I love that. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. I did not... How many different... How many different people exist within the realm of this one case? Are you kidding me right now? Like... You got these two, you have the other two that we still haven't met or no, or gotten their names from. And then you also have Joan and her husband. And then there is also um, just the, the jurors. Like we have different people in the jury. Like, man, I don't, think, I don't think a single Ace Attorney case has ever had so many different people in it. Like as far as I've witnessed, I wouldn't say like this is like one of the, there's a lot of people. <laughs> Witnesses, please state your name and occupations for the court. They must be together. Is that our brother and sister? They actually kind of got the same eyes. Constable Rowland Bates, sir. Not the to report on the streets, sir. And I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. They're married? Okay, I did not see that coming. They look so young. Like, they, they actually look like teenagers or something. But, um, with that said, we're going to interrogate Roly and Patricia in the next episode. I kind of wanted to play a little more because I'm like, this trial is going to be insanely long. But, um, yeah, I, I just want to really, like, think about certain things. We, we, no, you know what? No, we, we could play for like five more minutes. Let's see if we can like, um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long, but we celebrated our first anniversary on the other day. Hmm, only the other day, which is the day that, um, isn't that the day she died? I mean, she, she got stabbed. She did die. No, no, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from road days off, a gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know? They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check their, that meters are re reading true. They do a lot. They're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our street lights. Mm. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet. I'd have collapsed long ago. <laughs> but it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. They witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Sir Mrs. B? That's right, sir. Isn't it really? Rowley is barely, barely with us. Constable Rowley Bates, sir. Nothing to report in the streets, sir. What a great witness he's going to be. Yeah, he's, he's tired. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Okay, now we're, we're just going to stop it. We have to. Because this, I'm going to get statements and then I'm going to have to press. It's, it's just... It's going to be this whole thing that I'm just not going to have time for. I'm sorry. But anyways, with that said, I just. Whenever I go over the information gleaned from the trial in this instance. 
we didn't really learn much. We did figure out that there is this guy that's wearing a, the juror, number six. He's wearing a green coat. He looks very similar to the um, victim. But Dane Von Zeeks did bring up a good point that, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean he did not go down Briar Road. I want to say he didn't. Because it will, it will explain some things. Like the guy collapsed in front of him. There was nobody else there. So it, I feel like it would open the path for like that theory I had where like Joan stepped out for like a minute and like maybe stabbed someone. <laughs> Possibly. But I mean, then you also have those two other guys we have not spoken to. It could have been, it could have very well been one of them for some reason. So, um, yeah, there's still a lot we have to unpack before we get to a, a resolved conclusion. And it just takes a lot of things. <laughs> so I can't wait to um be able to cross-examine Broly and see what he will give us. I don't know if his wife will give us too much new information unless she was there, which I guess I can assume she probably was, which is why she's on the stand. But it will be in interesting to see what he says and like, if maybe he saw something differently because I want to say that it was thanks to him that they apprehended um not to in the first place so I feel like this next the next episode will definitely be open up some other doors that were probably close to us as well so yeah with that said I think I'm going to officially end it here and wrap it with a bow and until next time I hope you all have a great and wonderful day thanks for watching and until next time bye